Uh, hello, YouTubers. I'm back going over the WZ RELB or reliable brand uh, inverters. I've got a 5,000 watt 24 volt and I've also got a 3,000 watt 24 volt. Uh, just want to recap again with this polarity issue with the outlet. If you own one of these reliable brand uh, inverters, it would be, or the XYZ uh, INT inverters now, the ones on Amazon, I believe, are the same. Same exact faceplate and everything. I'm thinking it's the exact same inverter. Could be the same company. They may have merged or something like that. Anyways, this is something you want to check out. With, of course, the power's off. There's nothing connected to it. Um, what we have here is I have my... We're doing a continuity test of this outlet. And if we look at this outlet, that black, that black plug there is... It's connected to what is supposed to be the hot. This is your standard electrical uh, diagram. You know, IEC, NEC, whatever. Um, U.S. type of outlet. You have your neutral, you have a neutral and earth ground, right? And then your hot is always on that small outlet or the small part of the plug, the small uh, stick there. And your ground, of course, on the bottom, and this is your neutral. Anyways, so what we have here, this is theoretically the hot, correct? And uh, so it should correspond with the continuity test with the hot lead that they are, that is, that is uh, set forth in the, in the instruction manual and whatnot. Um, but as you can see, that is not happening. It's not triggering this continuity tester. What they did do is cross wire this outlet. You can see here that the hot from the outlet is tying into the neutral lead on the terminal bus for you know for exterior panel or exterior outlet if you want to hook up to that that's your high power connection there and the reason being i have two of these and it's why they're both wired exact same way and i can show you here what's going on what they've done is this red is this is your hot these are your hot wire coming out that's your main lead going over to the terminal bus all right, and that's for your high power, 25 amps out. And this other wire coming off that same connection there is going over, running straight down there to the neutral bus on this outlet. This is reversed. They reverse these two. If you own one of these, you better check this. You really should. It's, a, it's <laughs> well worth it to you because what's happening when I tested it I have a video on this as well, showing it briefly. I read out with zero volts between the ground and the neutral, zero volts between the ground and the hot, but as soon as I, and, and, but, and then I would get 120 when I hooked between the neutral and the hot, it was acting normal. As soon as I plugged something into this outlet, I was getting 60 volts be between the ground and the, and the hot, and 60 volts between the neutral and the ground. So it was cross-feeding in this whole system, screwing that whole thing up. So there's a very simple solution. I've tried this and it's working. As I just simply switched out these, the Phillips head screwdriver, put this red hot connection over to the neutral bus on the, on the PC board and take that black neutral and put it right here on the hot. What that then does is makes this black, your hot, this red will now become neutral. You could paint that out with white, uh, get some white out, something like that, with a piece of tape on it. That's your neutral. Your ground is wired correctly. It ties in correctly, and that all works. Um, there's been a lot of speculation on these things. People are saying that it's a, it's similar to a, uh, a, uh, what, geez, 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 geez. Center tap, a center tap setup, like you would have coming off a power pole to your house, where you'd have two 120 legs and a neutral coming in, and then you'd have 120 and 120 volts, and then you combine the two with the neutral or the ground or ground generally to get 220 volts or 240 volts. Now that so that's been speculated. These are 60 volts on the neutral, 60 volt, you know, 60 volt on the neutral, 60 volt on the hot, and that the ground or uh, is is your return line 
but but that's that's not how I'm finding these to be. I have two of these and they've been wired the exact same way. So again, to recap this, switching these two over will correct will correct your polarity. And all you have to do is, is turn that white and use that as your positive. The, the system will function normally. It'll function like a normal grid power. Now, it was brought up that the ground was carrying the current and that these two, the neutral and the and the hot, were at 60 volts each. So in order to supply the unit, the outlets or, or output, you would need to have that ground connected. Here's the ground situation on these units. Right here, underneath here is your terminal. Where's that sucker? <laughs> Get down there. Right there. That is your terminal for, for your case ground, right? Equipment ground. And that ties in to, it has these leads. One runs over, of course, to that ground terminal block. The other ground goes into the outlet. And this other one loops around and ties into the circuit board. Now the circuit, circuit board has two MOVs, uh, metal oxide, metallic oxide, um, varistors. It's like a variable resistor. These are basically surge protectors. If they get a lightning strike or something like that, these will block any current from jamming back up into the board to save your unit. Okay, so with this ground issue, if, if the ground is tied in and, and permanently fixed to this, this board then and it's been speculated that there's no way to isolate that but I don't believe that's true either because you can see the little white spacers there these plastic spacers this board is floating there and this is the only connection to ground right here so that is removable you can you can separate the ground from this circuit board because all these other bolts going through here screws bolts going in there are tying into the heat sinks and now the heat sinks have protection there and they are not connected to any part of the board that is has any conductivity right it's all protected out it's these are not going direct, direct to ground any of that circuitry is not going directly to that case making it hot now i've been doing some testing here and um and i've been running a system and i've and by by reversing these two wires I've been able to get standard grid type electricity. All this comes back the way it should. Your ground stays the ground. Your red now becomes neutral and your black becomes the hot and it functions perfect. <laughs> it's beautiful. Let me come out, come out and show you again. Now, this is a recap. I've already done another video on this, but I wanted to cover some of this, these grounding options here and, and, uh, so for some of the testing, I've actually separated those out. What I've done is taken the two for the outlets and bolted them together and wrapped them in tape out here. You'll see it in a minute. Just ice them so they don't bang around and hit anything. So that, so the ground from my terminal bus to my outlet is, is tied in. And there is no earth ground then going to the case or the circuit board because I disconnected that from the circuit board there. So there's no current going off of that circuit board and guess what? I still have 120 volts and it only comes out of the hot terminal. And I'm going to show you with some testing here uh, briefly. One other concern would be if you're earth grinding these units, how much, what kind of parasitic draw, what, what kind of draw are you getting out from that? I've, I've, I'm testing on that and I'm getting 0.2 volts when I connect to earth ground in between, you know, just run a voltage test with my meter between the ground wire and the ground that I'm hooking into an outlet that's off my home power or to my water pipe. You can see a 0.2 volt once you connect that up, that ground. So let's step out here, I'll show you this unit. And as you can see, I have reversed those wires out. I have moved the red to the outside and the black over there so that this now is the hot ground and the red is neutral. And you can see that I have that wired up that way for my panel that's running. All right, well, that's, uh, I wanna give you a, do a little sniffer test here. Nothing going on here. Let's fire it up. That 
I show you, there's that blue tape. There's those two ground connections. They're tied together so that the outlet and the terminal bus both have ground and that is tied to my box ground I'll show you in a minute. And you can see right here that that ground connection is disconnected. So there's no ground tie to this, this circuit board. So theoretically I should not be getting 120 volts <laughs> or 122, 23, whatever it is. There's my hot, there's my neutral, and there's my ground. Hot, neutral, and ground. Let me show you over here where we have the neutral. Nothing. Hot, that's hot. So this is a single pole. This is not a split tab, split phase, split tab. It's not 60 volts, 60 volts. This is 110 volts. Where the 60 volts is coming from is when you plug something in here without changing these wires out, you cross feed to your terminal bus. If anything's hooked to that terminal bus, everything gets 60 volts. It's crazy. It's a dangerous situation. Here we go, running over to my circuit, my panel. Here we go, there's your neutral. Neutral ground and hot. Coming in, coming in hot. Here's the hots. Got my ground running up, tying to the ground on the panel. I also have a leg running over to my neutral. This is an isolated neutral bus, but it has a ground connection, a ground tie. So theoretically, this unit should have shorted out several days ago, but it's been running like a champ. Absolutely like a champ. Now, there is some very, very minimal current flow between, let me get this up, get it zeroed.